My dogs are here, boom. There they are, there they are, they're here, they're happy. Let's jump into it now. This is our COVID-19 pandemic going on, but we're not worried about it. We're just gonna get on with life as best as we can. Uh, stick to the rules, but stay active. That's the most important thing. Let's crack on. This is some extensions and stretches you can do from home right now. Grab a mat while I'm talking. Uh, get yourself ready, nice and straightforward, nothing strenuous, just to keep your spine extended, feeling good about yourself. Uh, with plenty of stretches. Let's crack on, let's do this, boom. Okay, so what we're gonna be focusing on today, now, are exercises which are primarily extensions, and we're gonna cover some, uh, some stretches, some basic stretches. I'm gonna be doing some more core work and flexion stuff with sequences and isometric holds and all that later on. But for today, we're going to look at just again stretches and extensions. Again, you can do these every day, they're so good for the body. And you might find as well, if you're spending lots of time on the computer or watching Netflix, as probably most of us are, you're in a flexion state. So, this is now going to help extend your back. Before we get to that though, let's try some of our traditional straightforward stretches. It's also very, very good for your hamstrings and your, your lower back. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to have the legs nice and straight. We try to avoid having the knees bent, just helps the hamstrings a bit more. Back is neutral. We're going to then stretch towards the feet like this. So the aim isn't to get to the toes, you're just going as far as you're comfortable. And again, you might start to feel a stretch in your hamstrings and your calves and your lumbar tissue. That's your lower back. So great stretch, great hold to do. Okay, from here. I'm going to keep the right hand exactly where it is, left arm will then go towards the back, head turns away, and we hold. This is called the jackknife. So my right hand is to the right foot, left arm is to the back, and the head turns away. And then slowly, left hand comes around to the left foot, right arm again to the back, and again, the head turns away. This just really helps to warm up the spine, ready for the spine twist. Great stretch, even the obliques now they get a good stretch. Okay, I'm going to bring this hand back around, another double stretch towards both the feet there. Excellent, okay, now with our left leg, so we're going to have to know our left and right here. Left leg comes up like this, right arm, more or less the, the tricep, goes on the outside of the left leg. So my left leg is raised, right arm outside of the left leg, left hand to the back, and again, head turns away. And then to the middle, same thing to the other side, right leg is raised, left arm <clears throat> outside the right knee, again right into the back, and the head's turning. So I've got this arm nice and straight, this arm is also nice and straight, both arms are locked and the knee is bent. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to go back to middle. I'm going to take an IT band stretch. Now, see, the IT band is a very, very important tendon. It connects to the knees from the glutes, around the glutes, piriformis muscle. So, to get this stretch, very, very important here, we have the left leg tucked in, very similar to what we just did. And I'm going to try and get the heel to come in nice and close to the glutes like this, and then my left leg is going to cross the right leg. So your left leg is here to begin with, it then crosses the right leg. We then take the left hand to the floor, right forearm, it's always this portion of the arm here, this is the forearm, that's going to grab the left knee, boom, there's our stretch. And if you have a tight IT band, you start to feel the pinch around your glute area. Even if you don't feel the pinch, these are still really good stretches to do. If you do lots of walking or hiking, it's a great hold, also protects the kneecaps. And again, I normally say this in my classes, I don't really tend to feel much of a stretch this side. It's slight, but it's not that intense. However, if I now go to the other side, I tuck the right leg in. Again, heel nice and close to glutes. Now my right leg crosses my left leg. Now my left forearm onto the right knee, right hand to the floor, even now here, I've got a slight stretch around those glutes. So I'm going to make it a bit more intense, I'm going to bring that knee even closer, neutralize the spine, back is nice and straight, 
And again, this arm it acts like an anchor point. This hands down to the floor, but this is my anchor point. Really bring that leg in, and there's that stretch. Yeah, got that one. Okay. Going to bring the leg down. This is now a very good stretch for your sciatic nerve. So if you have early stages of, say, piriformis syndrome or sciatica, or just a general stretch now for your hamstrings and low back, this is a brilliant, brilliant stretch. You're going to have your left leg nice and straight again, exactly what we did before. Left leg is nice and straight. Then you sweep back your right leg. You're going to have both the knees in the same position here, so there's not too much tension on my quads here. My left hand is down to the floor. This hand is down to the ground. I first move from the hips to bring the body down. Around about here, you might start to feel the pull in your, in your hamstring. Then I take the right hand, it's going to travel as far as I can get it towards that left foot. And again, it doesn't matter if you can't get to your toes, you just go as far as you're comfortable. Again, I'm not leaning down too much into the leg just yet, but now what I can do is just flex the heel off the floor. So I'm going to flex, lift the foot off the floor, flex the toes to the head this way, but keep leaning into the leg. And what this is going to help do here is going to stretch out your sciatic nerve that runs again from the foot to the glutes. And again, you're going to feel that pull all the way down the leg. Sometimes you feel it more in the calves or the hamstrings. Keep leaning in, but flex those toes to the head. Keep leaning and flexing, leaning and flexing. Big, big stretch. Yeah, so now I just bring that foot down nice and slowly. And I'm going to sweep around my right leg. Now my left leg will go back. We know the drill. Right hand to the floor, move from the hips first. Really important you don't move from the shoulders. If you move from the shoulders like this into a flexion state, you're not going to get as much of a stretch. So you want to make sure you're moving from your hips. I bring the body down from the hips like this. Even here, I've got that stretch in the hamstrings. This is enough for some people. Additionally then, if I can, I get that hand to that foot or as far as I can get the hand. Some clients now that I'll be teaching would only make to get their hand to about here, which is absolutely fine. In that case, you bring your hand under the calf where your arm is and then bend at the elbow. Just bring the leg down, sorry, the arm down. That will help the stretch like this. But of course, if you can get to the toes, excellent. There's my stretch there. Leg again straight. I'm trying to avoid the bend of the knee because I want to stretch those hamstrings. And again, by stretching the hands, it helps to stretch your lower back tissue, your lumbar back. And in lots of cases now, you'll find that your lower back is sore because actually the hands are too tight. The back itself is probably perfect but the hamstrings are too tight. So keep that leg as straight as you can get it. Really, really important, as straight as you can get it. Lean into that leg, flex those toes back, keep pointing toes to the head, and move in from the hips. So what you're really trying to do is almost make a pyramid position, a triangular position. The toes are pointing this way, body's pointing this way. This is your base, that's your stretch. That's your sciatic nerves engaging there. So great stretch. Okay, excellent. We're gonna sweep around the left leg. We're not going to take that spine twist we were talking about slightly earlier. The feet slightly wider this time again, legs again nice and straight. Spine is neutral, we have the prayer hands, they're into the sternum. I'm going to keep them pressed into the sternum. I'm going to first exhale to my left, so I'm breathing out here. I exhale through the mouth. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Breathing to the middle. Exhaling to the sides. Breathing into the middle, exhaling to the sides. I'm feeling the stretch in my obliques and spine. Prayer hands are nice and tight to sternum, exhaling, breathing. Legs are nice and still, there's my stretch. Into the middle, I'm going to take my last one here, back towards the center with a final double stretch again towards both the feet like this. Great stuff. And again, there's lots and lots of stretches we can do. I'm going to try and now work on some extensions I was talking about there in the beginning, which again are really, really important. There goes my window. Which are really, really important if you spend lots of time, again, in that flexion state. Let's crack on with that. Okay, so these are the extensions. And again, very good for the spine. What this does is it basically extends your back. Very simple. So you have extensions and you have what are called flexions. Your flexions now will be exercises which would be very good for your course. You're in like a sit-up position where you're in a curved state like this. When you're crunching up like this, it opens up the back of your spine. The only downside to this, of course, is when you are on a computer or if you're in a position like this, which is flexion, you're crunching everything in those abs. Good for the back, but not so good for the, for the stomach there in that constant position. Also puts lots of pressure on the back and the neck. 
So what we have are extensions which are like the Cobra, uh, the Cat Cow as well, which is a mixture of both flexion and extension. And we're going to start with a, a Cobra here. So the Cobra position, the hands are going to be nice and flat to the ground. The arms are directly under the shoulders. I'm in shot here. Let's come a bit further here. And that's my Cobra. So I don't really want to worry about looking up too much like this. There's too much pressure in the neck. All I want to do is look towards the front. Again, my arms are nice and straight, shoulders have dropped, and my feet and knees are down to the ground. If you find this is too much now for your lower back, what you can do is come down to forearms, almost in a slow swan dive position like this instead. So either or, again, it's really about just listening to your body. So this is our first big air extension. Again, this helps to open up the chest, allows the organs to breathe and great for the inside of the spine. So this is my extension, this is my Cobra. From here I am going to go back to a flexion state. This is our passive downward dog. Child's pose in yoga, we tend to call this a downward dog. We're going to bring the forearms to the floor, head to the mat and the glutes to the feet. I'm going to curl up as much as I can into a ball. Again this creates the flexion for the back here. So this is my lumbar, this is my thoracic, this would be cervical there. So big stretch back, Again, it really helps to counteract the extension. So every time we do an extension, we want to make sure we're doing a flexion to counter the exercise. Hands again here, dropping down hips, looking to the front, shoulders drop, and my head is raised up. Again, I want to avoid this here. I want to make sure it's nice and assertive, looking to the front, shoulders have dropped, hands to the mat, and again, those arms are locked if I can. And again, with exercises like this, because sometimes you're holding it for maybe 10, 15 seconds, there isn't a set breathing technique. However, you do want to remember that when you are doing your breathing techniques, you're inhaling through the nose and you're exhaling through the mouth. So that's the Pilates style breathing techniques. I'm going to go back here again to another passive downward dog. So really tucking back into that ball here. And again, I'm going to take my last Cobra. So again, with my classes, I would often do two to three of these at most. I don't really want to do too many because they are very strenuous for the back. And actually, sometimes you can overdo cobras like this. What you can do instead is a slow swan dive, which is what we're going to try next. So again, arms are locked, looking to the front. Again, my hips aren't necessarily down to the floor, but the hands are shoulder width apart. They're not too wide. If I get the hands, say, out like this, I can get the hips down to the ground. The problem is, there's a lot of weight and pressure on the centre of the body, which is the lumbar right there. So I need to make sure I'm supporting the body correctly here. Hands get under shoulders, and there's my drop. I'm not as low, but my back is much more secure and safe. Okay, so from here, my last passive downward dog is like this. And at this point now, if you find your wrists are a bit too sore, you can actually do an extended active downward dog by bringing the arms out and the fingers onto the tips. This just takes some of the pressure off the wrist joint. So there's my active downward dog there. Good stuff, okay. So now I'm gonna to go towards the middle and we're gonna try the cat cow. Again, this is a very good exercise. This is flexion and extension in one. And I'll explain what's what and the breathing technique. Really, really important here. So again, the hands are directly under the shoulders. This does take some practice. I'm going to press the hips down and I'm going to raise the tailbone. That's my cow position here. That's also where I inhale. This is the extension. So this is the extension here. This is where I breathe in. This is my cow position. From here, I'm going to arch the spine. I look towards the navel. This is where I exhale. This is the cats, and this is our flexion. Again, drop the hips, raise the tailbone, look to the front, breathe in. There's our cow position. And cat. Breathing in, look into the front, there's our extension. Great for the lower back. Exhale. The best way to really explain the cat position is like someone's almost trying to pass a ball through. You're trying to Arch out the way to allow the ball to come through. So I'm looking to the navel, really lifting the spine there. Massive flexion state for the back. And again, pressing back down into my cow. 
really just trying to move from the hips. So I've inhaled, I've exhaled. I'm breathing in, trying to keep my arms nice and straight. I look to the front, I exhale. Again, breathing in, and out. Okay, my last one is here. Deep breath in, I look to the front, cow position, and exhale. And now from here, I can go through the needle. For this exercise, we're going to keep the right hand exactly where it is. You then take your left arm, it's going to feed through. We bend at the right arm, head comes down to the floor, shoulder and the hand, and that completely relaxes down. So this hand is completely relaxed to the floor here. If there's too much pressure here with the wrist, I can bring this arm down and still have this arm here, and I hold that stretch. So I can have this, this mobility, this movement here with the arm, depending on the state of the wrist. Then I go towards the middle, and of course, same thing to the other side. So now I'm going to bend at my left arm. You won't see much, but I bend at the left arm, feed the right arm through, head comes down, shoulder and the hand. So I'm trying to make sure my head and shoulder rest down to the mat. That's through the needle to finish there. Okay, so now from here we're going to go into our slow swan dive. This is a fantastic extension because it's not as strenuous. So I'm going to bring the hands down to the floor. Yeah, we're in shot. Good stuff. So, for this one now, there is a set breathing technique. We're first going to make sure we bring her down to the ground and we're going to rest the forearms with the spine. Everything's nice and neutral to the mat here. So now, from here, I take a deep breath in. I'm going to lift, lift, lift. Notice now I bring the elbows off the floor and the forearms and this is now where I want to stop. So I never want to completely lock the arms like this. It's really, really important. I keep that bend at the elbows. Elbows are bent, forearms off the floor. Then from here, I exhale, I breathe out slowly. Head comes down, again, forearms come down to that, neutralizing the back to that. It's called the slow swan dive. And again, a deep breath in, there's my lift, raising, raising, raising. Boom, I'm going to stop right there. Arms are bent. There's a great stretch in the abs at this point as well. Exhale. Head comes down. And again, I'm breathing in, there's my lift. Nice deep breath in. And again, exhale. Okay, nice deep breath in again. There's my lift, nice and high, big stretch. Exhale back. And I'll go for one more here. Again, deep breath in, breathing in through the nose. There's my hold. Exhale here. And I can now bring the arms onto my lumbar. We're going to go for our double kick with a back extension here. So, hands are placed onto the lumbar tissue. Again, I've got, got sorry, I've grabbed hold of the wrists. Knees and feet together. I'm going to go for one kick, two kicks, three. The feet come down, arms stretch back, and the head comes up. Slowly, head comes down. Hands placed back to lumbar. We go for one kick, feet come down. We're doing the kicks now for the quads as well. We're going to warm up the quads soon. Two kicks and three. The feet come down, arms stretch back, head raises. There's my extension. Again, it doesn't have to be too high at this stage. Hands back to lumbar. Let's take our last one. Let's go for one kick, feet come down. And two, feet come down. Our third one, feet come down, arms stretch back. There's my lift. Big stretch. Head comes back down. Hands to the side. Just going to neutralize the spine here. And now for the quads. Left hand's going to grab the left foot. If I can, or I'm going to bring the hand as far as I can get it. You can also use a resistance band at this point or a belt or something like that. I've got hold of the foot. I keep it down to the ground. Alternatively, I can use my hand as well. So I can rest this down. And again, there's my stretch. I'm trying to get the heel here to touch the glutes, to help stretch the quads. The quads, the muscles there in the front of the thighs. Nice and slowly, foot comes down. I'm going to place the left hand in front of the head here. Right hand grabs the right foot. Again, here comes down, and there's that stretch. Okay, 
before it comes down. So now this is the tricky one. We're going to see if we can grab both the feet at the same time. There's a right way and a wrong way to do this one. You want to make sure your feet do all the work. So what you're going to try and do is grab both feet again. This will take practice, but try if you can to grab both feet like this. We're going to go for one here. We're going to go for two. This is a great extension now. So again, we're going to let the legs do all the work. We're going to try and avoid lifting like this here. You notice how my legs stay nice and still. Head's coming up. I'm not getting much of a stretch here. But what I can do is really anchor onto the feet like this. Push the feet away and naturally your head will raise. Again, it's not going to go too high at this stage. This is high enough for now. From here, feet come back to the glutes and your head will rest. Okay, and again, deep breath in. Through the nose, there's my lift. Even quads engaging here. Feet back to glutes, head comes down. And again, I'm now all the legs to do the work here. From the knees to the feet. They're doing the moving, the fact I'm holding the, the toes like this means my head and shoulders are raising naturally. I'm going to take one more here. I push the feet away, there's my lift. Again, even to the point that you might find you get the thighs off the ground. Big stretch here. Feet back down, again, not too high. We're going to release the feet. We're going to go back now slowly into an active downward dog. Fingers onto the tips. We're going to hold here for about 10 seconds. Stuff. Okay, so I've kept it fairly short because again, <clears throat> I want to try and do more over the next couple of days and weeks. I'm also working now um, on doing a, an online course uh, for you to do at home. So I'll literally be grading people that choose to do this course. I'm currently building it now into a platform online and I'll be issuing out certificates as well. So it's, it's a great little module. It's coming very soon, but it's not just not just yet. However, these videos you're watching right now, these are gonna continuously run. I'm gonna try and keep them fairly short. Um, and again, I wanna look at more now flexions for the core and we're gonna do some more stretching as well as band stuff. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed it. We have much more coming very soon. Boom, job done. Now you have to get out into the sun.